point because it's people often talk about spiritual warfare they they love to throw that and i i always say it's like the word love it's lost its meaning today because people just throw it around willy-nilly they don't really know what the word love oh i love pizza oh i love i love going and riding my bike no you just like it there's (laughs) there's a big difference between the what the true definition of love is and this and the same thing is applied to spiritual warfare we throw that around all the time well spiritual warfare it's spiritual warfare do you really know what spiritual warfare is because you continue to put all these other things in this category of well that's just a secondary issue it's mm-hmm. or the favorite is non-essential it's yeah. just a non-essential thing it, it's it it really is an essential thing because and this what this burns me i mean this really burns me when they say well I'm singing this music to the right Jesus. And so that makes it okay. Well, okay. it doesn't because one, it wasn't written to the right Jesus. That's like, hey, let's go take a um, Elton John song who he wrote that song to his male lover. And let's go and say, well, we're just singing it to, you know, my my girlfriend. That's not how it works. You can't do that. <laughs> I got to I got to hit this. Oh, there you go. Could you hear that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So I uh, I had to, the divine feminine had to speak there. So sorry. <laughs> I need to get me one of those. <laughs> yes, they're worth every penny. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's really that's what's, and then on top of that, not only are, are you doing that, but you're also funding a satanic organization that's out there. Literally, their mission is to send people to hell wrapped up in a pretty bow that says Jesus on it when it's the wrong Jesus. And you are funding that you are massively funding that. And the reason why these groups continue to do what they do is because churches all over the place are compromising. Mm-hmm. It's the compromising Christian. Nowhere in scripture, and again, you know, I'm not a pastor, I don't claim to be, but nowhere in scripture do I find the word compromise when it comes to biblical doctrine. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, no, no, it's it's either you're you're in the truth or you're not. And uh yeah, there there are men out there who there's examples of men who went the wrong way. I mean, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. I think it's I think Demas had a heart issue. Um, you know, there's men like Diotrephes who love the preeminence. Um, there are men out there who, uh, like Peter, who, um, I, we would use the word compromise, but he, he tried to make the gospel more appealing by, you know, cutting corners on, on this Jew and Gentile stuff. He, he, he kind of leaned towards the Jews and, uh, you know, so there's that. And Peter had to rebuke him to his face for doing that. But, um, I, I think what we have here is a crisis of devotion to truth. Ultimately, uh, people talk about how much do you love Jesus? Well, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, walk in the truth. Uh, we, we have separated truth from love mm-hmm. when really truth and love are married to each other. They're Siamese yeah. twins. If you love Jesus, you'll love the truth. And if you love Jesus, you'll walk in the truth. And the true test of your love is not the emotional upheaval that you have in a church service. The true test of your love for Christ is how much truth do you walk in? How obedient are you to the word of God? And so truth and love are not enemies. They're, they're Siamese twins. They share the same heart. You kill one, you kill them both. Um, and so do these people love Christ? Well, the answer to that is, do they love truth? If they don't love truth and they don't walk in truth, like Bill Johnson, like Stephen Furtick, like Andy Stanley, like, uh, you know, just the plethora of these people, these people don't love Jesus. They don't. I think the A.W. Tozer quote, these, uh, there's a group of people rising up that says that they, that they actually are worshiping worship. Yeah. They've made an idol in their own mind. They've done Romans one. They've created it. They've, they've, they, they've created a Christ in their own mind. That is not the Christ of the Bible. And they worship that Christ and people sitting in the pews and people buying the album say, well, they're worshiping Jesus where they're worshiping an idol that they've created that they're calling Jesus. And that's a completely different thing. And so, um, that's the big, that that's where discernment comes in and that's why in the end times jesus spoke so much about deception and deceived i think there's 27 books in the new testament all but one of them speak about false teachers and deception um i think with the exception of the book of philemon but this is an ongoing theme throughout the new testament you've got to know what the bible says we've got to know 
where the what the word of God is and what the word of God teaches and where where the parameters on those stuff are so we can stay in them. I have that box up here. It's right here by my head and I put the word God on it and we've we've got to keep God in the box. We've got to stay in the box of Bible doctrine. That's that's what we ended third Adam 4 saying, stay in the box. Stay in the box of truth. And if you love Jesus, you'll stay in the box. And so let bind yourself to Bible doctrine, bind yourself to the Bible and don't go outside of it. Anything outside of that is not love for Christ, just mysticism. It's false teaching. So don't do that. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with following the heart because I hear that often in the church nowadays, the modern church, follow, follow your heart. Well, what does your heart say? Well, the thing is, is we're not supposed to be following our heart because our flesh will lead us astray every single day time Mm -hmm. and if you can't hold to correct biblical doctrine and i know you've done some stuff just recently on what's going on with the tony evans thing Mm -hmm. but i want to i'll take it in this direction one of them who through for a long time this took a while but for a long time who was praised a lot in the christian church was a guy by the name of bill bright uh bill bright was connected to lauren cunningham and they there's arguments between who created the seven mountain mandate but they claim that those they did because they received the seven mountains from the lord they wrote it down on a piece of paper and then the next day they came together and they they shared this type of thing but bill bright he started the campus crusade for christ but he claims that he's getting this revelatory extra revelatory stuff from the lord as well as he was also he also received um a grant uh from the john templeton association which if you know anything about john templeton his entire life goal was to try and create this one world religion to knock down the walls between the different faiths and so he gave awards to people who were in progressive religion and bill bright Mm. won the award billy graham won the award people like the dalai lama and mother Teresa, they all won the Mm. award as well and bill bright was one of the winners. now look at what's going on with campus crusade for christ today Mm -hmm. they are now indoctrinating their people with transgender and alphabet and homosexuality and all this type of stuff they're flipping the tables flipping the scripts on on abortion saying that it's okay to do these types of things and they're silently indoctrinating the people in this campus crusade for christ who are going out into these colleges and we see what's going on in the colleges nobody knows what gender they are uh they're all about feminism they're all about abortion they're all anti-semitic they're all these types of things going on mm. and i wonder how that happened. Well, maybe it came from the leader of that who compromised on some of his doctrines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like if you're building a building, you know, if you don't, if you don't do the foundation, right, the foundation's off, everything you do going up is going to be off too. And I'm not a builder, but I, I know, I know enough to know that. And so, you know, you got these foundations of these ministries built on, on weak doctrinal positions it's only going to get weaker as it goes up. And so, I mean, uh, that's, I mean, that's why we have to separate from these things because they're not getting better and they're not coming back. They only, you know, once a piece of meat goes rotten, it goes rotten. You just cut it off and throw it to the wolves Mm -hmm. uh, because it's gone. And so that separation is the only answer to this stuff. That's, uh, you know, that's why I tell these Southern Baptist guys, I say, you guys need to leave the convention. You need to separate. It is gone apostate separation is the only answer, but they're going to try infiltration uh, you know, we're going to try to make rock and roll Christian again by creating a bunch of Christian rock bands. Well, no, you're, you're just going to, you're going to send a bunch of young, stupid dudes into the Christian rock and roll industry, and they're just going to get worse and worse. You're sending a lot into, into Sodom and Gomorrah. And we all know how that turned out.